So here we have a question on a Venn diagram. Now we always can we can recognize a Venn diagram when they've given us many different conditions with all these different numbers. And so yes, a Venn diagram is always going to be the best scenario to handle these kind of questions because if you had to try and picture everything in your mind without putting it on paper, it would get very messy. So how does a Venn diagram work? Well, we look for the total number of conditions. Well, we say we see here we've got 200 learners who are analyzed. 75 took life sciences, okay? So that's one condition. Geography and we've got pure maths. So those are three different categories and so we are going to have three different circles. Now many people often say how do we know how to draw the circles? Should we make them overlap or not? Well, 99% of the time they're going to be overlapping circles in these types of questions unless the question at the very top says that the two conditions usually it's only when there's two circles they'll say that they are mutually exclusive and we've looked at a video on this in previous videos where they'll say mutually exclusive and then you know that the circles don't touch but for most of the others especially when there's three different conditions the three circles will interlink and so there we have our three circles next what you want to do is just label each circle and so there we have L, G, and M, which correspond to life sciences, geography, and pure maths. Now what we need to do is try and fill in each part as best as we can. So the first bullet point says that 200 people were analyzed. Okay, so we can say that there are 200 people in total. 75 people took life sciences. Now, what you don't want to do is just go put a 75 over here. I've seen many people do this. That is not what life, life sciences is this part over here. It's everything in that circle that has just been highlighted. So it wouldn't be correct to put 75 there. The 75 is going to be split into these four main parts, but we don't yet know how they're going to be split. Some of it will go in the one, some of it will go in the other. So we can't actually do anything with that 75 just yet. And then the next bullet point says 50 people took geography. We can't do anything with that. 130 people took maths. We can't do anything with that. 60 people took maths and life sciences. So where is the circle that has maths and life sciences? Or what I mean by that is where do the life sciences and maths circles overlap. Well, the life science circle is over here, and the maths circle is over here. Where do they overlap? Well, for now, let's take out the geog let's take the geography circle away, and then it becomes very clear to see where the overlap is. It's over here. Now let's put the geography circle back, and so they've told us that the that overlap is. 60, right? Because they said 60 people take pure maths and life sciences. But now we're still stuck because we can't put 60 here. We can't put 60 there. That total is going to be 60. So keep that in mind for later. Then we get to an interesting one. It says that 40 learners take all three subjects. Well, where would all three circles intersect? Well, take some time. But what you would find is that they all intersect over here. And so there we go. We can definitely go and place a 40 in there because that green section is one part. There aren't lines, for example, that are going through. So we, we can put the 40 over there. Then, do you remember what we said about this section earlier? Well, that was the link and that was this one over here, which said that 60 learners took maths and life sciences. And so we can now go put a 20 over here so that the total of that interlink is 60. The next thing says that 60 learners took none of the subjects. Okay, so then we'll put 60 on the outside like that. 45 learners took geography and pure maths. Well, geography and pure maths interlink here. Well, first I'll just take the life sciences circle away. I'll then put the life sciences circle back. And they have told us that that part, the interlink between geography and maths, there are 45 people. Well, we already have 40 people in the one part so we can just fill in a five over there. Then the last bullet point says that X learners 
took geography and life sciences only. Okay, so the, the interlink between geography and life sciences is over here. And I'll take the math circle out so you can see that clearly. But now when I put the math circle back in, we just need to be careful. They've told us that X learners take geography and life sciences only. Okay, so these are people who do geography and life sciences only. So they don't do maths. So in this green interlink part here, some of that includes maths as well. But would you agree that this part over here does not include maths? And so when someone says only, then you should look to these types of places. So for example, the turquoise one would be people who do life sciences and maths only. The green would be geography and maths only. And so they've told us that life sciences and geography only should be X. Now things are fairly easy from here on out. So we know that they said 130 people do pure maths. So have a look at the maths circle. How many of its four sections have not been filled in? Well, it's only this part over here. And so we know that the total of the maths should add up to 130, which means that there should be 65 people over here. If you add all that up, you will get 130 for the maths circle, like that. And now moving on, well, we know that the life sciences circle should add up to 75 because they've told us that 75 people take life sciences. And so what we could do is say that 75 minus 20 minus 40 minus X. That'll be that section over there. And so 75 minus 20 minus 40 is 15. And so this whole section will be 15 minus X. We could do the same approach for the geography where the total for geography is 50. So in this part of here, we could say 50 minus 40 minus 5 minus X. And if you go do that, you're going to end up with 5 minus X. And so there we have it. Every single part of our Venn diagram has been filled in. So now we can use maths to solve for X. What we can now say is the following. Say that these segments here all have to add up to 200. So we turn it into a mathematical equation. And so what I did was the following. In my equation, the 130 is this part here, which was all the people who do maths. And then I just added the 15 minus X, and then the five minus X, and then X itself, which I realize I've actually just forgotten in my equation. Whoops, so we have to just add a little plus X over there. And then also the 60 on the outside. And the total of all of that should give us 200. Now we just solve for X. And what you would find is that X is equal to 10. And so now we can go fill that in on the diagram. And so this part over here, which says 15 minus X, well, if X is 10, then that's just five. Then this part over here where it says X, that would be 10. But now a slight problem arises over here, and I only picked this up while going through this video, is that if X is 10, then this part is minus five. Now, in real life, that is impossible. You can't have minus five people doing geography only. However, this won't ever happen in an exam because what I, what I didn't do was check that the numbers worked out perfectly. I promise you everything we have done is perfectly correct. If you had to go add everything together, you would see that there are 200 people in total. You would see that 130 people do maths, 50 people do geography, and 75 people took life sciences. The only thing is that it just doesn't make sense for real life that this is a negative five. But mathematically, all the numbers make perfect sense. So if you understand how we got all these numbers, then that's extremely important, and that's the most important part. But in the test, they'll try to choose numbers that make more sense for real life. So let's now, so now that we've solved for X, number two says use the diagram to determine the probability of G. Now, what does that little symbol mean over there? G and L. So where are the people who do geography and life sciences? So what we do is we intersect the circle of geography and life sciences. And there we can see the overlap part is that 10 and 40. And so the people who do geography and life sciences, there are 50 of them. 
out of a total of 200 people. And if you had to simplify that, you'd get 1 out of 4. The next one's quite interesting. It says determine the probability of the people who do maths. Okay, so it's people who do maths and they must geography or must do geography and then they must not do life sciences. That's what the not, that's what that little line means over there. So it's people who do maths. So we'll go circle in the maths circle and then geography but then not life sciences. So where are the people who do maths and geography? Well, they would be over here, but then it mustn't include life sciences. So those two green dots that I've just circled, the 40 is also inside the life sciences circle, and so we must ignore that one. And so we are left with five people. So what it means is five people do maths and geography and not life sciences. So that's five out of a total of 200 people. And if you go simplify that, you're going to end up with one over 40. And that's it. So my apologies for having a weird answer over here. Sorry for the minus five people who do geography. I promise you though, the numbers are absolutely perfect. It just, the numbers don't make sense if we think about real life.